What's up everyone, it's your boy Norn Rad 89 here bringing you another video. I know it's been a few days since I brought you a video, but I kind of took a bunch of like four days off or so of just like not filming, not recording anything or anything like that. I had some family time, we took a zoo trip. That was really fun. So we saw all the animals, took the kids there. So that was a really fun day and I've been really enjoying the NBA, the games going on because we're coming to the crux of the end of the season. So it's going into the playoffs. So I'm kind of it's getting really tight, really tense. Want to see the seedings for the team. So I've been really just enjoying that stuff. But now, back to the Puppet Master franchise. And today we're going to be talking about Access of Evil. So this is the latest edition of the franchise that we are going to be discussing today. Positives, negatives, all that kind of stuff. And this is the first one that starts off a trilogy, the Access trilogy. We have Access of Evil. Access Rising and then Access Termination that have kind of a continuation story. So like I said, today you're going to hear my thoughts and my opinions on this, but that just means it's mine. And I would love to hear from all of you in the comments section. So let's do this. Roll it. So Puppet Master Access of Evil is the latest edition that we're going to be discussing in the Puppet Master franchise. And for this one, this is one that takes place right after Andre Toulon's first initial death in the very first Puppet Master film when he commits suicide before the Nazi agents come to him at the Bodega Inn. And those Nazi agents are actually Klaus and Max and we get to know who they are and our main character though in this film is Danny somebody who works for his uncle at the bodega and making furniture and stuff and he got very close with Andre Toulon and he ends up discovering and knowing about the puppets and stuff and after Max and Klaus come across Andre Toulon after he committed suicide and they're not able to find the secret to life Danny kind of comes across them and you know finds Andre and then he actually finds in the wall the puppets and he's our new lead puppet master for the access kind of era like you know of this first film and everything and he goes on his own adventure of trying to stop the nazi agents max and klaus and a few uh ozu a japanese agent as well who are trying to blow up a factory that is making like a new material that's going to increase the weapons of the Americans payload for nuclear weapons kind of thing and stuff. So this film takes place in like 1939, 1940, the height of World War II and stuff like that. And that's the main kind of setup for our story. Now let's get into some positives and negatives. One key positive I have with this film that I have great respect for is that it goes all the way back to that first film and ties us into there. And it really does a good job of doing it. Like of, you know, tying us into that exact moment right after the first film when Toulon died and setting up Danny's character. I think the setup for it, the story for this film, I think is all executed well. And I think it's very interesting and I like that stuff. So for me, that's a very good thing about this film and the ambiance as well. We have David Dakota back, a strong director in the franchise that's known for returning. And we also have Richard Band back as our music, you know, composer. So great stuff. Another fantastic positive I have with this film is the puppets, the puppet action and everything. There's a lot more to do in this film. Once Danny discovers the puppets and he discovers the serum and he knows how to activate them and stuff and all that. Oh, there's a lot of work with Blade, Jester. Pinhead looks kind of weird in this film and stuff, but we also have an introduction of a new character as well, Ninja, that puppet. Fantastic with the ninja throwing stars and the samurai swords. So there's a lot of puppet action. It's not necessarily that great in terms of stop motion animation because there's not a lot. It's mostly just puppetry work and it's not up to par as some of the other films. You can definitely tell it's much more low budget, but I still appreciate the fact that this film has more puppet action and puppet kills and stuff going on than the previous two films. And like I said, I really enjoy the story of this film and I like our villains, Max, Klaus, and Ozu. I think our villains do a good job of being menacing. They do some evil things and they their plan and stuff and the way they set up the dialogue and the writing is actually good in this film between them. So I actually really like the antagonists in this film. They're threatening, they're menacing, and I like the fact that this film has good writing in terms of it feels very much of the time that it came out. And I know some people might be bothered by that because there's a lot of slang and there's a lot of slander type words and like, you know, words that aren't uh, fond of or frown, you know what I mean? That like, you know, people don't talk about it like that way they do like back then. 
but it's true to how the dialogue was in this era and this time. So that's what I really like is it feels very much like a period piece film and they kept it authentic. But let's get into some mixed and negatives because there are some bad things with this film. One main thing is that our acting isn't up to par in every area, particularly two characters. And it's actually our main character, Danny, and his girlfriend, Beth. I think them two are pretty atrocious in terms of acting. And that's one main crux is like, I love the story, love our villains. The puppet action is off the charts, but Danny doesn't really deliver in terms of Puppet Master and acting and stuff like that. I'm like, oh man, he's very just, we can do without it. And in terms of crying, he is the worst, the worst, one of the worst criers I've ever seen on screen. Like if I was David Dakota and the director, I would have just been like, yeah, man, you need, you need to stop that. Don't do it. Just don't do it. They asked him to do it in a couple scenes and I was just like, yeah, just stop asking this kid to try to cry. And another one is Beth, his girlfriend, like she just has the very worst line delivery. I don't know necessarily if it's her acting at par se, but it's the line delivery and maybe a little bit of the directing. Maybe David didn't tell her like how to kind of, you know, develop a character and stuff like that. So that some the acting is very, very subpar from those two characters. Another thing with this film is that for the story being really cool and the setup and the puppet action, our third act is kind of underwhelming. It's not the greatest third act or anything like that. It's, I have a lot more fun with the first act and the second act. And then once we get into like the last 10 minutes of the movie, it's, it's cool and I like it, but it's just not as like jam packed or as amazing as I wanted it to be. But you can still tell this is the very low budget era and time for the Puppet Master franchise. But in terms of Axis of Evil, I love the fact that they introduce us to Danny, this new character. They tie it into the first film. We have the puppets back doing a lot of cool stuff. And we have the new ninja puppet. We didn't discuss that, which is actually Danny's brother who actually gets attacked his brother and his mom get attacked by the nazi agents and they kill them and stuff like that so and he's able to put the essence of his brother in the ninja puppet so that's a really cool moment and stuff like that but besides the crying like i said besides the crying i can do without that but overall in my book for puppet master axis of evil in terms of a rating this is going to get a 7 out of 10 and it's mainly because it's this is a very strong beginning film but are they going to be able to keep this up for axis rising and axis termination you're going to have to find out by liking and subscribing to the channel because you don't want to miss a thing because we're going to be talking about all the other films then like i said we got a few more to get through then we're going to rank them all so you can see where they lay. And I might have some other Puppet Master videos planned too as well. Because we're having a lot of fun with this franchise. Like I said, for me, this is a very underrated franchise that I think deserves a lot more eyes and a lot more respect. So, Access of Evil, 7 out of 10. Solid, stable, you know, above average rating for me. But I also want you guys to stay tuned to the channel because I'm going to be having another video popping out soon. I know I'm a little late on this one, but it's directors I love, movies I hate, and we're going to be talking about Christopher Nolan this time. So I'm really excited for this one. I know I'm a little bit late on this one. I was trying to do it once every month, so we might get actually two for the month of April. So be sure you're subscribed to the channel. But most importantly, I want you all to have a safe and happy day. Peace out.